All right, guys, coming back at you with another knife video. We are looking at a Ferrum Forge. This is the Ferrum Forge Scepter. It's another guest blade uh, appearance here on the channel by my buddy Steven again, who provided me the uh, Kaiser gun hammer as well. And he had just recently got this knife. And so he's letting me do a, a check it out for a few days and do a video on it. So very cool design by Ferrum Forge. Um, the Scepter is a smaller knife. It is a blade length of three inches a four inch handle which I feel like it's that's the spec listed specs I feel like it's a slightly smaller than four inches in the handle I could be wrong um, 0.17 thick on the blade it just got a nice thick blade stock you have a drop point blade with a bead blast um, bead blasted stone wash finish that you can tell that it's pretty cool again four inch handle thick 0.52 thick uh, titanium weighs four ounces Right hand hip up carry only on that one. It is a manual flipper on ceramic bearings. It has the Hoback rolling detent on it, which is adjustable, which is very cool. And it made it right here in the US of A. So um, I like this one quite a bit. I like the size. I like smaller knives these days. And when I saw that he got this one, I was pretty stoked to check it out. Now, the, the Hoback rolling detent is definitely different, and I've had a couple Ferrum Forges that have it, and it definitely feels a lot different than a lot of blades. When you release the lock bar, you're going to have this. This is the detent right here that you're overcoming. It's kind of a... Like, it's not going to fall on itself. It's never going to be that smooth because of the type of detent. It's not that it's not a smooth knife, excuse me, but it's... It's gonna, you gotta overcome that detent right there. If you look at like the Shirogorov uh, Neon Ultralight, as soon as you release that lock bar, that sucker's falling on you. Um, same with like the uh, GSD by Leon Ma, you know, it's gonna fall on you right there. This is not gonna ever do that, and that's all the Ferrum Forges I've had. You gotta kinda overcome that detent and then it'll roll shut. So it's not um, gonna be a free faller because of that. That's okay. That's not necessarily important. Uh, 20 CV steel on this one. So nice steel. Um, he said he was able to put a pretty good edge on this himself. And it looks pretty nice from what I'm seeing here. Um, I like the blade shape. Again, it's a smaller knife. Let's talk about or look at some size comparisons while we are got it out here. I've got the Hinderer Half Track, which is a very, very similar size knife. Um, a little smaller on the half track than. Why didn't I grab a small spins without silly of me? Um, in fact, I should have one in my pocket. I don't. Anywho, half track. The neon ultralight by Shira Gorov. It's a little bigger, so it's it's more along the size of the half track. Um, it's should have about the same size as a small Sabenza. Feels smaller to me. For some reason, it feels definitely more like the half track, which is under, which is smaller than the small Sabenza. It's under four inches on the handle. So, these two I think are the, the closest in comparison. Um, I'll do the GSD to give you, give you a size there, just bigger. Again, that ultralight, um, sure, Gorov. It's gonna be a little bigger. And these are about the same size as a small Sabenza. So, a little bit smaller of a knife, but you can still get a four finger grip on there. If I have, if you have medium hands like I do, um, if you have large hands, you've got a little bit of real estate. You're probably going to be a three finger, maybe three and a half finger knife on this one. So it is smaller, um, which is fine. I like that about it. This comes in. The nice thing about Ferrum Forge is that they get really creative and they start bringing out different finishes and different handle um, anodizing, and they do different uh, uh, carving on the handle. We'll call it. Um, this one is called the Mech mech gray um, and you can see it's got kind of a mechanical look to it on the milling on the titanium handle I love it I think it's really cool looking it's totally recessed right here as you can see I mean it's just a cool looking industrial almost gun I don't know it just is really cool it's not plain you know it's, it's pretty much basically a bead blasted stone wash titanium but it's got this really cool milling to really kind of set it out. You know, kind of, it's really eye catching. Uh, and then the same kind of finish on the blade. Then you have a little touch of color with the pocket clip and the one um, backspacer here, or not backspacer, um, barrel spacer. So it's very open construction. Again, flipper, 
Nice, nice flipping action. You can, um, like you said, with the whole back rolling detent, you can adjust the flipping action on this knife, which is pretty cool. So, price wise, you're looking 500 bucks. So, it's, a, it's one of Ferrum Forge's knives that they, they don't produce very many knives um, in their shop. They make a small number of each model, and it's so it's pretty close to being a custom knife. Um, it's, you know, it's kind of borderline, a, produ a small production company. My, you know, they they do some they make they call them Maker's Choice, and these are ones like they made they did a run for these from Master apparently a few months like quite a few months ago like nine months ago. Uh, Blade HQ just got a run in and he um, that's where my buddy got this from, and they have you know quite a few di few different variants of it. They've got like a bronze titanium one, um, but they're very cool knives. So kind of a you know pricier knife. Um, Leaving a little bit more than like a hinderer, but a similar model where it's a technically a production knife, but it's made in a small quantity and small. Um, that's the XM18 next to it, which makes it look that makes this look huge. Um, so they do different finishes and such with those. The same with the the Ferrum Forge. So the Ferrum Forge is, is a great manufacturer of knives. Um, never had any issues with ones I've owned. Always thought highly of them. And this one is no exception. It's very comfortable in the hand. Has really good ergonomics. Um, I, it's a small blade, but it works really well. Um, it's you know pretty much what we what all could get away with for EDC. It's more of a preference to carry a larger blade. In my opinion, you could you can easily do your EDC task with this much blade. Three inch blade is plenty for typical EDC tasks. In my opinion, um, a lot of times it's just the guys like carrying larger blades, which is totally fine. That's their preference. There's that detent. And we overcame it. I do use a steel lock bar insert here, on there, um, for you know basically so you can avoid the wear of the titanium on steel, and it can be replaced later on down the line if it does wear. So um, nice centering on this one. Very good action. Pretty early lock up on there. So very high quality uh, piece from Ferrum Forge. Um, I like the size quite a bit. It's, it's small, but it's not, like I said, you can get done what you need to get done. Ergonomics are really good on it. Um, doesn't feel cramped in the hand at all. Doesn't feel too heavy. I mean, it's overall just a really cool folder. I really dig it. Um, I like these smaller, thicker, beefier knives, and the, the, half, the half track is very similar in thickness. And the handle, as you can see here, they're about the same, honestly. Um, the blade thickness, yeah, I can see that. There, the, actually, the Ferrum Forge is a little thicker in the blade, even barely, but a little bit. Uh, these, like I said, these are just two two very similar size folders. The half track is a little smaller in the handle, as we'll see here. Go pivot to pivot, and you can see it's got a little bit more handle on the scepter, um, but very very similar. And I feel like you can get. And get all four fingers on the half track as well. And you got this little ramp there, which I really like. So I like these beefy little folders. Um, I think they're fun little EDCs, and they're you know they're gonna get the job done. You're not gonna run out of blade unless you're you know doing extreme EDC stuff, and then you need a different, a bigger blade. That's understandable. But for the most of us, I think these size blades work really well, and I I really enjoy them. So uh, my impressions of the scepter are good. I mean. I, the milling is fantastic on this knife. Look at, I just want to give some close ups here of how nicely done that is. And I love that B Blast Stone Wash. That is a cool finish. You're never going to see use, your use on this knife. You could use this knife every day. Carry it as your Ferrum Forge logo. Carry it every day if you wanted to. And it would just never show use, even on the blade, because it's got the same finish. It's just going to look, you know, minus, minus the edge is where you'll see some use. but. Overall, the blade itself is not going to show you. So, good EDC finish because you're not really going to know that, <laughs> you know, it's not going to show a lot of wear and tear on it. So, very cool little blade. I dig it. Um, I wish, kind of wish I would have got on the master up on this. I believe it was pretty, uh, I can't remember what it went for, but it was, I think, less than what Blade HQ is selling it for now. I'm almost positive of that. Fair and Forge loves Master Up. They've even said, I've listened to the Knife Nuts podcast. And guys, if you don't listen to that podcast, go download it right now. It's freaking awesome. Um, custom Knife Maker Brian Nadeau is on there. You got um, 
Misanthropia from YouTube that I've known from YouTube for a long time. Uh, a couple guys off Instagram, their names are totally escaping me. But great bunch of guys, um, nice podcast. And they had Ferrum Forge, it was a nice uh, episode with Ferrum Forge on there. And the Ferrum Forge guys, Forge guys are really cool, really cool guys. So I, I gained a greater appreciation for their brand from that video. But they talked about their mass drop offerings and how they use mass drop a lot themselves to shop. And they decided to use mass drop to start to market their knives. And they did a great job. They've done uh, a couple of different types of their knives. I know this was one of them. Now they have their new um, designs that we is producing for them. The Falcon and the uh, Ferox, I want to see it's called. And that one's still open. The Falcon's closed. And basically what they were doing is they were producing a knife um, with Wee's actually making the knife. It's a Ferrum Forge design and it's marketed by Mastrop. And it's they've they basically filled up the, the um, drop before they product, produced the knives. And I think that helped drive, drive the cost down uh, to an incredibly low price on that Ferrum Forge um, Falcon and Ferrox. I think it's 125 bucks, 130 bucks stupidly cheap um we does a really good job manufacturing knives i'm guessing they got that price that low because they were able to pre-sell all of them and you know they knew okay we're making at least a thousand pieces we can you know justify this price whereas if they brought it to market and just marketed it normally they may maybe sit on those units for a while so i think that's how they were able to um achieve that but anyways check out fair and forge if you don't if you can't afford you know this kind of knife the scepter or one of their other offerings you know, go to go to Mass Shop. You still have, I think they extended the Ferox one a few more weeks. I got in on the Falcon. I'm probably I haven't gone on the Ferox, and I probably should have, um, and I might still now that they extended it. But Fair and Forge has great designs. This is another example of that. Really like the Scepter. Nice size on, on this one. I, I would totally carry and use this one myself. Thanks again for my buddy Steven for letting me check this out. And uh, thanks for watching, guys. And we'll see you on the next video.